Another thing I was fascinated with is When I first heard that um, that that Trey was gonna uh, do a final piece with the music of Queen, I thought, well, there's no other way to end it. <laughs> like that's <laughs> it. I mean that that it just seemed very perfect. But you guys are a little younger than I am, and so I'm curious uh, to hear from all of you about um, when you heard um, that you were going to be dancing and that this was going to be happening. Uh, farewell with. Um, the music of Queen and the great Freddie Mercury. What? Well, really, the, the Queen music that I knew growing up was because of sporting events. And they play oh. We Are the Champions oh, at, the, right. at the football games or We Will Rock You during mm -hmm. halftime. Um, so that was really kind of how I knew Queen growing up. This creation period was a bit different because usually we have a creation period of four weeks. And this creation time was eight weeks, oh. um, hence a 50-minute ballet. <laughs> Usually they're 30, we had four extra weeks, I think. Um, and all of these songs started happening and I, I loved the process because not only was the creation, the choreography part of it inspiring, I mean that's some of my favorite time working mm -hmm. with Trey is in the studio and creating. Um, I love that moment, but I was also learning new music. How about you, Chanel? It was kind of the same for me. Um, I also only knew We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions. Um, I also didn't even know Bohemian Rhapsody, which is apparently a really popular song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, you know, Trey started creating that solo on me, and I was like, wow, this is a gorgeous song. <laughs> um, and people were like, tell me you've heard this before. <laughs> and I was like, well. I love, I love um, that you're telling us this. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was, yeah, for some reason, I missed all the like iconic American movies when, uh -huh. I, and when I was a child, so. <laughs> but anyhow, um, the beautiful thing about when Trey choreographs the popular music that you would probably hear on the radio mm -hmm. is that you will never hear that song the same way again. You know, more than one person has told me that mm -hmm. this week, that once Trey choreographs to a song, mm -hmm. that that's what they see when they hear hear the song. Right. So that I'll be at a basketball so game like thinking about choreography yeah. mm -hmm. when We Were Rocky comes on. <laughs> so Katie, I'd like to hear from your perspective as someone that probably was very involved in the, in the management of the, you know, the farewell. And, and you, you've been with the, with the company for a while, right? I read I that have, on the website. I have. I've been with the company for five years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> what, what, I mean, what's it like for you to be um, in the audience hearing people stamp and, you know? Well, I just have to say, you know, I was thrilled the second that I heard he was doing a ballet to Queen because I was acting as our booking agent. Oh. <laughs> and uh, that allowed us to book a couple of venues uh, for our spring schedule that we didn't have on the books uh, at that point in time, just on that name. Uh, Trey and Queen I Cells. Know, I, I know. I, I mean, it, it seems, you know, he's a tall guy. I mean, he's, he's a, he does things in a big way. And it just, when I heard it, it was like, of course. Just mm -hmm. so perfect. So, tap dancing. You learned that this week, right? Yeah. At the, at the tap camp. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. No, I flew in I, early. No, and I, I ha I have, I've had the great joy of writing about this young man. I know he's an incredibly versatile dancer. So, had you, you obviously have kept up your skills, but like, how did the tap part come up? Like, yeah. um, you're tapping around the studio, and Trey said, let's do that. I mean, okay. Give us a little idea how that So happens. I actually grew up tap dancing, and Jacob's Pillow is always a really special moment for all of us because I feel like it kind of brings people together. And actually, my tap teacher and my dance teacher from when I was 3 to 18 is at the Pillow this week watching the final show. So oh. it's, it's just a really – it always happens at the Pillow. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it brings together people in our lives. It's really very cool. But um, I started tap dancing when I was like 4 or 5 um, and grew up doing it. I was lucky to have this master tap teacher. Her name's Diane Gouda, and she's still a tap teacher, has written many books about tap, and is a tap teacher uh, amongst the dance festivals and competitions. Okay, she's um, a very famous teacher, yeah. 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 Um, I did competitions. Uh, I competed on the world level. And, uh, oh, you, you're a champion tapper. Well, yeah. Yes, yes, it's coming back to me. You, you won a big, like, tell us what you won. Uh, I'm a, in, it, what was it, 2002, I won a world silver medal. Ah. So that, yeah. 
Um, you know, Trey kind of knew, th knew through the grapevine that I was a tapper mm. and, and I did a little tap thing for a gala fundraiser that we did. And I got an email a couple months before he started creating uh, Mercury Half-Life. And uh, he said, hey, I, I really, really um, an, am itching to create a tap solo because he actually grew up tap dancing. Oh. So he was, and he I had kind of put his yeah. tap mind on the shelf for many, many years. Oh. We walk into the studio that first day, and he starts tap dancing. He <laughs> knew the lingo, and all, Trey is, is uh, he's so musical. So I knew that it was going to be rhythmical. I wasn't worried about that, but I just didn't really know how it was going to go. And I think it went pretty well. There, and, then <laughs> <laughs> and then out, out popped Leroy Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. So Katie, can you tell us a little bit about what, he, what um, Brett is referring to with the, um, uh, the, the, some of the outreach that he, uh, he was talking about? Oh, absolutely. Because that, um, that's a really, I think, you know, you guys have seen this amazing performance, but there have been smaller performances. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we, we have, I think, a contract with the world uh, <laughs> to provide dance in unusual spaces. Um, I mean, throughout the entirety of, of the project since I've been there, mm -hmm. uh, we've created contracts with institutions th where you wouldn't normally see them. We just finished a big partnership with um, Sawtooth National Recreation Area and the U.S. Forest Service, uh, providing photography and video of the dancers in the wilderness to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act. <laughs> So it's putting dance and dancers and beauty and Trey's skill that goes way beyond the stage in all of these different places. And one of them was the hospitals. Another one um, was serving as the city of Boise's ambassador as we traveled the country time and time again. It's just many different ways that we've, we've stretched the boundaries of dance company. So I want to maybe move on to the first piece on the program, which was surprising to me, a little balletic. Mm. <laughs> and um, props, I mean, usually when I uh, anticipate a a dance by Troy McIntyre, I see an empty stage with lots of fantastic dancing. Now we have sets and props, and, and Katie, you're going, yes, <laughs> it was a more involved piece. Um, so, um, Chanel, why don't you talk a little bit about it, because you, um, I watched you in rehearsal, and I thought, <laughs> oh, she needs to go into acting next. <laughs> She needs an agent. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, I do. <laughs> Is there one here? No. Um, no, you have to use these opportunities. Um, I, I just loved watching your face. Um, and and I, in rehearsal, you didn't even have the makeup on. And I, I was envisioning the makeup because your face was so expressive. Um, I mean, you were just perfectly creepy. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, you had to do a little puppeteering, so did you. So talk a little mm -hmm. bit about um, being in that piece. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's very involved on a lot of levels, and um, I think it's the first time where Trey has really asked us to act, really yeah. act. You know, usually he likes us to let the movement speak for itself, you know, the... I guess the meaning of what you know what the piece may or may not be about is in the in the movement. He asked us to not add anything to it. This is the first time he was like Chanel, no, really, really act. So I had to actually stop dancing, learn how to act this part, and then put the dance back well, on. Well, you did it. You well, did but it. it was a very interesting process because I, I was like, wait a minute, I actually can't dance full out and act at the same time. It's <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. So I had to stop dancing, actually mark the steps, and work on my character building, um, which was fantastic. I think that's. It's great. It's a great skill for me to build. <laughs> and uh, um, we had a great time with the props, man. I mean, they're very elaborate. And uh, actually, Dan Luce, who um, designed the props with Michael Curry, came in and gave us a whole tutorial on how to work the birds, oh. how to work the bird on the big stick, yeah. um, how to work the bird, you know, the devil. How to carry the, the, the yeah. beastly baby. Right, right, exactly, to make yeah. it look lifelike and real, you know, um, because, of course, you can see us you know, puppeteering the puppets, but how do we, how does a bird actually look when it's flying? Yeah, you know, what does yeah. it mean when the wings go up, the body goes down? So all of that stuff we actually had to learn. We'd had a full, like, week of tutorials, um, which was also fantastic to do. It's, it's a, it was a first time for a lot of people in the company. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll say is that I had no idea who Edward Gorey was. <laughs> and, and that's the thing about Trey, you know, and I, I, I think I've, I've just... Now you do, though. Yeah, I know a lot about him now. Um, 
But Trey's just kind of blown my mind with like things I just never knew about. So Edward Gorey, you know, influenced one of my favorite filmmakers, Tim Burton. So I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time. So um, I loved diving into it and, and just kind of, you know, really, really acting and getting into the character in that way and letting ourselves go really far with it. Like there's some them parts in when I'm the Shrieking Nun where I know I'm like going way far. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Trey never reigns me in. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll just keep going for it. <laughs> hey, just... Does Trey work with you explicitly on where you focus when you're dancing? Trey is, um, he would like you to have a clear focus, um, but he doesn't always direct the focus. He gives, I can speak for myself, uh, he's, he gives me the liberty to choose a focus, but he would like me to have focus. <laughs> so it can be this like nebulous thing, you know, um, he's, he's kind of taught us with his vocabulary that it's the focus part of it, it's actually more intriguing than the actual step. Um, so when he teaches class to us, um, he's always like, where are you, where are you looking? Where are you looking? Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? He'll like literally be in your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you looking? Like you know, it. because <laughs> as dancers, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. We like teach ourselves how to be humble and kind of unassuming. So we're looking at the floor and we're not really trying to actually take in something and be seen. So, you know, Trey's like, look at something, pick something, <laughs> see it. You know, even if I'm arabesquing this way and I'm looking back at Brett, that's a choice that he's okay with as long as it's a clear choice. So um, he's never, like, explicit about where to look unless it's a choreographic choice on his part. But um, he would like you to have focus. Yeah. And I think that's where you can, as artists within his work, where you can make decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, I feel like that's where I get to play mm -hmm. within within the boundaries of his movement. You know, maybe last night I looked over there, and tonight I'm going to decide to look back there. And it just, for me, it keeps it fresh. It keeps it new. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Trey will let you know if he doesn't like it. So as long as, you know, he's but not saying anything, then, then, then I think, he, you know, we're moving forward. He will let you know. Yeah. I just think it's great, though, that Trey, um, the company ends with, uh, pieces that are showing some new side of him that I mean what a what a what a really great way to go go out to like oh it's like something is almost still starting